While we know that wildfires and flooding are just a natural part of being a planet, and that it's getting way worse because of our part in climate change, <laughs> the one thing most of us may not have thought of is right in front of us, or rather, uh, right above us. Well, unless it's daytime, then it's like below us or something. But in that case, it's above someone else. And other times it could still be above us during the daytime. Uh, you know what? I'm getting off track. The moon! The moon is a big part of the problem. Hello, and welcome to the show. Today we are talking about how the moon is affecting our oceans. So whether you believe in climate change or you're a climate change denier, this is something that we will all be affected by regardless. With our sea level rising year over year, we are going to be in serious trouble sooner than you might think. Of course, we know about the changing of the tide being related to the moon. The gravitational pull of the moon is the primary reason for our tides. High tides are common when the moon gets closer to Earth. This is called perigee. The relationship of the moon and Earth looks like this. Once a day, we rotate under the moon. Once a month, the moon orbits around Earth. As the moon gets close to us, that area of our ocean lifts up from the moon's gravity. The Earth keeps spinning, though, so the water shifts high tides every 12 hours and 25 minutes. Plus, there's a whole mess of the sun doing some stuff, too. But this episode is about the moon. So while the moon orbits and gets a little closer to us and then backs off like a flirty dance, it goes through another phase, one that takes 18.6 years between cycles where it changes its effects on our oceans. This is the lunar nodal cycle. Right now, it's in the phase where our oceans seem a little calmer and gives the appearance that our sea levels aren't rising as much as they actually are. The moon doesn't cause our sea level to rise, it just exaggerates or hides those levels. Soon though, we will be seeing a scary shift. The lunar nodal cycle looks like this. There's roughly a five degree difference in the path of the Earth and the moon. They meet up twice during their respective orbits, which are called nodes. There is a wobble happening here. The moon pops up and down about five degrees across a period of 18.6 years. When it hits that node and is closest to Earth, that's when our tides are increased to their peak. And of course, that means when it is furthest from the sun, the tides are lessened. But what the heck does this all have to do with anything? Well, we are in the low tide section of this cycle. And while it takes years to hit that high end, we should be planning for it now. With coastal cities like Miami on an inevitable path to join the lost city of Atlantis, we should be working on the infrastructure to protect them from rising sea levels. We should be doing that now. We're soon going to be reaching the lowest point of that cycle. So everything after will be rising. And if I did my math real good like, then in the 2030s, we will have our highest sea level ever. With all the changes to our planet, you know, like melting glaciers and stuff, we could be in some serious trouble. Sea levels haven't risen this quickly since around 7,000 years ago. Our glaciers are melting two times faster than they were just 20 years ago. While rising levels are normal, we have essentially doubled the rate due to the increase in greenhouse gases. The global sea level has risen five to eight inches since 1990. As our planet gets warmer, the levels will rise exponentially. So by looking at this lovely graph, you'll see that this red line is the total water increase over time. So all the places that are suffering from increased flooding right now we're in for a world of hurt. To learn more about the need behind the infrastructure for coastal cities, check out this video from NASA. As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today? <laughs>